Hi everyone, welcome back to freepilotgroundschool.ca. This is the final uh, review of flight instruments. So let's uh, get going. The pitot tube is connected to the airspeed indicator only. The static port is connected to the altimeter, airspeed indicator, and vertical speed indicator. Let's review the airspeed indicator. The airspeed indicator measures dynamic pressure, which is the total pressure from the pitot tube minus the static pressure from the static port. It suffers from position and angle inaccuracies. The indicated airspeed is what's measured on the airspeed indicator. The calibrated airspeed is indicated airspeed corrected for position error. Look at the pilot operating handbook for the correction. True airspeed is the calibrated airspeed corrected for air density. If the pitot tube becomes blocked, the airspeed indicator acts like an altimeter, meaning it'll overread in a climb, underread in a descent. If the static port becomes blocked, the airspeed indicator will underread in a climb and overread in a descent. Let's review. The static port supplies air to the case. The bellows inside the altimeter expands or contracts in accordance to the difference in air pressure. A static port blockage will result in underreading in a climb and overreading at a descent. If it is completely blocked, the altimeter will stop moving. The vertical speed indicator has a calibrated orifice that indicates a change in air pressure. An accurate reading takes approximately seven to 14 seconds, and a blocked static port will result in a VSI reading of zero. Let's review. The magnetic compass aligns with the Earth's magnetic flux lines. Magnetic variation is the difference between true and magnetic north. Compass deviation is the difference between magnetic heading and compass heading. There are a number of errors in the compass. Magnetic dip is most pronounced near the poles where the flux lines are more vertical. Northerly turning error has the compass lag on turns to and from the north and lead on turns to and from the south. The compass on east-west heading will accelerate uh, or will turn to the north when accelerating and turn to the south when decelerating. The gyroscope has two properties, gyroscopic inertia and gyroscopic precession. The heading indicator relies on the principle of gyroscopic inertia. The gyroscope remains in place while the aircraft turns around it. The gyroscope is on a horizontal axis and it must be reset every 15 minutes at a minimum due to gyroscopic precession. The heading indicator can be uh, vacuum powered or electrically powered. The attitude indicator functions on the principle of gyroscopic inertia or rigidity in space. The gyroscope axis is vertical. The, gyro the attitude indicator does not precess due to the axis direction. The turn coordinator measures the rate of turn and rate of roll, whereas the turn and bank indicator only measures the rate of turn. The ball indicates that the turn is coordinated. The marking on these instruments indicates a two minute turn. That means a 360 degree turn in two minutes. Always avoid instrument meteorological conditions if not properly trained and the aircraft is not properly equipped. However, if you do find yourself in IMC, use a selective radial scan. The attitude indicator is the focus, the heading indicator and the altimeter are primary for turns and straight level flight and the heading indicator and airspeed indicator are primary for climbs and descents. That concludes this review of flight instruments. Thanks a lot for joining me, and we'll see you in the next lesson.